Welcome back, folks. Thank you um, for just still being here with us. You know, we've been saying um, a lot of things, a lot of great stuff. Jasmine is incredible. Just a huge asset of knowledge. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. And we're trying to just soak it up. <laughs> as you all. I'm learning from you, too. Yeah. <laughs> and from one y'all off as an organization. I see yes. y'all been doing great things. Um, so, you know, we, we sort of get into the home stretch right here. And we talked a lot about the protesting and how that's sort of like moving the momentum, supporting black businesses. So talk to us about like advice. What advice do you have for us, for especially young black, brown people, for our people? I think- How, how can we be successful? Number one or one. <laughs> pandemic, during this pandemic, this crazy time. Well, I think that it's the same thing we can do all the time, so, <laughs> especially now. Um, and talking about imposter syndrome, I think is a very big key. So I didn't have the language to talk about imposter syndrome until much later in my career, but I realize now what it is and how it, it manifests. And so imposter syndrome, for those who aren't familiar, is the, the language given to the idea of, I don't belong here. I'm not good enough to be here. Or look at them. They're all doing so much better than me. And I don't know if I'm in the right space. Um, so I think that sometimes when we are the only, whether it be the only woman in the room, the only black person in the room, the only African person in the room, whatever it is going to be, sometimes we find that and we use that as intimidation of like, oh, I'm the only black person here. They're going to be thinking this about me or let me watch what I say because I'm black. And in, in some spaces, People are making prejudgments about you based on the color of your skin. But in some spaces, they're not caring. And here we are in these meetings like, oh, because I'm black, they're going to think this. And like now we've consumed ourselves with anxiety about that. And they're just like, you know, because sometimes everyone doesn't have race on their, the top of their mind in the way that we do. So now we're in our heads about what we're saying and what we're doing. And then we're not performing. And now they don't want us because we didn't perform well. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that way. Mm -hmm. So imposter syndrome, getting help trying to cope or combat that as much as possible of saying, I am brilliant. Mm -hmm. I deserve to be in the spaces here. I wasn't invited here by accident. Right. I deserve everything that's coming to me and even mm -hmm. more. So getting that mindset in, ingrained in us and not questioning ourselves mm -hmm. um, and knowing that we look at us like right. with, if we look at the history of both African and black American people. We have had so many reason to just pack our bags and jump in the water, like just be done. If you look at the discrimination, you look at the, the, all the um, challenges, physical, mentally, psychologically, the way that we have, they have tried to break us down and we are still here. We are still resilient. We are still joyful. We are still starting businesses. We are still helping one another. So the fact that we are doing this means that we come, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Mm -hmm. So the fact that my ancestors even made it to be here to have me for me to be here means that I'm important I matter right. I'm here for a reason I had I can have an impact I'm here to do something mm -hmm. right so so imposter syndrome when we think about like oh I'm not good enough thinking back to our history learning more of that history number one because that's not always the history we're taught in the schools the but <laughs> learning the history well, I'm learning Exactly, unlearning the, the whitewash history and learning our actual history, um, or even, even just within our families, things like DNA or Ancestry.com, people are learning like, wow, my grandpa was a this, or my family was the first to do this in Philly. Learning who we are helps us stand against all of the noise about who, uh, telling us who we are and what we're capable of. So I would encourage young people um, or anyone with a dream to, to Aki's point, know that you can do better than where you are no matter where it is. There's some other level you can unlock. There's some way that you can open the door and pave the way for people coming behind you. And then knowing that you can do it, no matter what that is. There are people, there are resources to help you, which you also mentioned, like knowing that there are other people. I'm not the only one who feels this way. I think a lot of times shame and guilt operate because of isolation. I'm the only one who doesn't feel good enough. No, we all in the same room, not feeling good enough, but nobody's talking about it. So leaning into peers, leaning into communities, realizing like, hey, I'm having this problem. Just me saying I'm having this problem and being able to share it with, with, with you frees me. Now I don't have the same shame about the problem. And now you can help me. You might know how to do what I'm trying to do. And it might be very simple. And you could have told it to me in 10 minutes, but I was suffering and struggling with it. So knowing that we can lean on each other is, I think, a really big key. Um, leaning on each other emotionally, but also doing business with each other. Putting each other on is one reason why I love Issa Rae, because she's like, I don't need new people. I have my own friends. My friends who came with, with me, yeah, I'm giving them jobs. I love it when she said, I support everything black. <laughs> Yeah. Also, Issa Rae has this um, mm -hmm. philosophy where you know she's really about. I think that's where you're getting at. Really mm -hmm. about networking horizontally, yes, like vertically. That like, people that you're with are you know, you know, 
you can move forward together, you will all get to, you know, sort of like the destination of the promised land. Right. And, and you can trust them because they were there before the money, before the fame. They were riding with you when you had zero dollars. Now, of course, they're going to ride with you when you have a million. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I would say to, to those folks is like, know who you are. Yes. And I, that's very powerful, right? It's just like know your story, right? And know your community. Know, like, people around you. Don't ever feel like you're alone. And that just goes back to this idea of why we're creating this platform, right? We want to create this space to empower our people, mm -hmm. you know, to hear from someone like you who's been through all aspects of these changes, but to give us some advice because I do think, like, what you, you share a lot of amazing stuff with us. We're very lucky to have you on this show. Yeah. Like, man, like, for real. Um, I get excited every time uh, we have these sort of moments. Because I'm learning a lot. Myself, yes. Right? And people are learning from your show. Not I, just you're, you're providing a space for other I, people I, to I, learn. Well, that's, the, that's the hope, right? That's the plan. Um, yeah. And what, any other advice that you have? So we say uh, know yourself, invest in your history, and also taking pride of who you are. Mm -hmm. right? You know, that's, that's mm -hmm. also deep and profound. Uh, what other things that uh, advice do you have for our folks? And when I say our folks, I mean like, you know, black and brown people. Mm -hmm. and how we could be successful during this crazy time. Mm -hmm. um, I would just say networking 100%, have, taking the time to have the conversations. Mm -hmm. So knowing that you can reach out and say, hey, Aki, I know you do this. I know you went to Penn. I want to go to Penn. Can I talk to you for 20 minutes? Right. Taking the time to network outside of just your friend group. So we just talked about your friend group is a resource, but they don't know everything. Mm -hmm. They may not be your customers. They may not be your actual market. Mm -hmm. Go outside of that and ask them who they know or just to branch out. Um, but I would also say to Aki's earlier point, car carve a niche. Decide if you want to start a business, how is your business going to be different from every other business out there, right? If we look at the bread aisle, we see that there are so many different types of bread. It's not like one person made bread and then nobody else can make bread, but they had to say, okay, that bread exists. What can I do that's different? How can I sell a different type of bread, right? So know that there's room for all of us, but it's important to, to strategize and think about your niche. What's going to make you a different candidate than everybody else? What's going to make this show different from the Joe Budden podcast? Or how is this different? Or from By the Hood podcast? Wait, so being strategic about what makes you unique and then capitalizing on that. Because we all know stories. We'll support somebody if we know that they're authentic, if we you know they have like a good intentions even if it is the same thing like there's a thousand t-shirt companies but I'm gonna support this t-shirt company because of this reason this founder is really yeah. passionate or whatever else so finding out your niche what can you do that's different than everybody else and then taking that to the max and knowing that like when we're growing up all of us are trying to, to fit in everybody doesn't nobody wants to stand out but now that we're older the goal is to be the most stand out as possible yeah. so how do you capitalize on that and how you build your brand saying like yeah there's a ton of jasmines but there's no jasmine jarla on Morobe because I have this skill and that skill mm -hmm. and I think that will take us so so far so it's even more going in depth know yourself but know what you can bring that's different than everybody else mm -hmm. how do you know what differentiates you yeah yeah what differentiates you or they say like they can steal all the ingredients but the sauce don't taste the same right. mm -hmm. so what makes your sauce right. different than everybody else's and it's like what you're asking how do you know what that is yeah. I think it's a couple things number one is self-reflection so when I think about my career and myself I think about what do I enjoy what tasks drain me versus what energize me? So when I talk to young people after that, I always feel energized, I always feel great. But when I have to write a blog or write something, I'm always like, oh, okay, like it drains me. So I wanna do things that make me feel good. It's very selfish in, in, in some level. I wanna do things that make me feel good. So now I know, okay, when I do this, I feel good. When I do this, I feel bad. Well, how can I do more of the things that make me feel good? So that's number one, self-reflection. Number two is thinking about what do people compliment you on? Right? What do people say you're good at? Like, oh, you're a, you're a good dresser. Maybe you should go into fashion. Or, oh, you know, I really like the way that you put words. Maybe you should be a writer. Maybe you should be a speaker. So thinking about, if you think back to like their last 10 compliments, usually there's some sort of thread. Because people notice, different people will notice the same thing in you and they'll give voice to it. So thinking about what have you heard feedback on? What do, what do people like about you? And then what do you like about yourself? And what do you enjoy? Um, I think that's how you kind of figure out what your special sauce is. Or, or looking at the impact. Before I did this, this was whack. Then I did this and now it's better. And so, okay, what was that thing? What did you do? How did you do it? That sort of thing. So it's a reflection. I love that. I love this idea of self-reflection because self-reflection doesn't just mean sitting there thinking, but it just means like being in tune with yourself, but also being more receptive to feedback that you're getting from people. Mm -hmm. So it just becomes this idea of self-awareness. Right? Yes. Um, Some important amazing, points here. Amazing, Some important amazing points. stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting to notice like a, a pattern here. 
based on the guests that we have. There's a lot of touch point on self reflection, mm-hmm. self awareness, mm-hmm. and and we usually don't look at these things as a sort of like skill set. Mm-hmm. But these are skills, yeah. right? But talk to us about that. Yeah, that self awareness and self um, self reflection are like a very important skill set. Yes, if you listen to any CEO, like the big, the top 10 CEOs or the people, you know, YouTube has all these motivation videos. They talk about what they do in the morning. And most of them talk about having some sort of meditation, right? They exercise, they eat well, they get up early, but they also meditate or they take time with themselves. Because I think the world has so much noise and the world will say, oh, you're you're supposed to do this. Oh, you can only be a gas station attendant based on the color of your skin and your gender or whatever else. You can. That's as far as you can go. Right. But like you have to shut that noise out and say, no, actually, I can own the gas station. I can own all of them if I want to right so you have to be able to stand strong in who you are and the only way you can do that is taking time to like you said be aware to notice what energizes you what drains you what what you like what you enjoy what you have the capacity to be able to do so it just takes I think it's easy to always have noise if we look at social media we could just scroll 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 all day you could have other voices coming at you all day but taking that time with yourself to get quiet and say okay well what Who am I underneath all of this? Which I actually think you've been asking questions about the pandemic and its effects. I think the pandemic has given people a lot more time and space because now we can't party every weekend. We can't support 6, 8, and Nas and all them every weekend. We have to be at home thinking about (laughs) about stuff. So I think that it's it's giving people some time to say, okay, well, outside of those things or outside of going to restaurants and being a foodie or outside of my brunch group, who am I? What am I good at? What do I do? What am I going to do? If all that stuff was gone, what would I be doing? And we're seeing what we would. I think the pandemic has only made people more of who they were. Yes. Right. So if they were a business person, they were on it. They're kind of like keeping that same momentum during it. But if they kind of weren't, weren't really, they ain't been doing nothing. They just been binge watching everything, which is not a shade to them, but that's just who they were. And more of that comes out during the pandemic. So um, I think that self-awareness, you'll see a lot of the CEOs, people who are successful are self-aware. They have to know what what they bring to the table and why people want it. That's the big key, right? Like, why do people, especially if you think about people who are in Mark Apple, for example, these phones are thousands of dollars. What does this phone do technically that other phones don't do? Absolutely nothing. Every phone, the purpose is to text somebody and to pick it up and use the phone. But there is something that Apple and iPhones have given some magic to people that says, yes, I want to pay a thousand dollars for this. But they had to think about what is our brand? What is our niche? What are we doing that other people that even Android or Samsung or people with the same money can't do? Right. right. And so that's why I think that self-awareness has to be key even for a brand, for a company or for the CEOs and the owners as well. So let's talk about you, Jasmine. What do you do to go to, <sighs> to process your self-awareness or self reflection Yeah, so my first place is I start with these three circles. So when I'm thinking about kind of what I'm going to do next or where I'm at, the first one is what am I good at, mm-hmm. right? What do I have the skills to be able to do? And the next one is what do I enjoy? Right. When do you do this? When do you do this weekly or like throughout the day? Like when do you, when um, do you find this case? This is more so like a monthly thing, a transition point. This is what I'm talking about right now. But I think every day about my, about life, I try to meditate morning and night. Um, but the skill, the, when I'm thinking about what I'm kind of doing next business-wise is what am I good at? What do I enjoy? What can I get paid for? So in my business right now, I've just made a transition because I just kind of kicked my business back up during COVID because people had all this time and I started going on Facebook and Instagram Live. People needed help with their resumes. I had kind of chilled. I'm like, I don't need this business right now. I'm going to just chill. This came up, but now I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm good at doing resumes, but I don't enjoy the individual consultations as much. So I'm going to now pivot to just be speaking and doing engagements. And I'm going to do a course so that people can still get the resume information, but I don't have to spend all of my evenings doing these consultations. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm thinking about, I'm not enjoying this anymore. How do I, we're back. (laughs) Okay. Um, I also, like I said, think about in the morning, in the evening, what my goals are. I keep, I live by a calendar. I have to-do list every day. I design what I'm going to get done that day. But I also put time on my calendar every month to reflect. So I have like um, weekly goals. I have daily goals. And then once a month, I make sure that things that I'm doing align with those larger goals. Because sometimes I'm focused on the day-to-day and I don't remember like, oh yeah, this year I wanted to volunteer more with kids. Yeah. Did I do that? Or what can I do? What can I put on my to-do list this week that will help me get closer to that goal? So I'm trying to build my self-awareness in that way, too. Yeah, yeah. I think with, um, you know, it's, it's very important to set, set goals, like goal setting. Mm-hmm. And it's something I've, I've noticed is that, and something like you just touched upon it with, like, you know, our daily, weekly, monthly goals. You might look at, like, a goal you set for, like, a month and realize, oh, I didn't do what I what I said I was gonna do or what, like, what I intended to do. Maybe I, maybe I even for, like, for, forgot about it. But then what I'm learning is that 
the importance of like habit, like habit development. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, because sometimes it's like we put so much on, okay, you gotta be disciplined or you gotta like, you know, you gotta just like, you know, you have to put in effort. But like a lot of, a lot, there are a lot of things that we do that really are on automatic. Mm -hmm. and, but it's because of like the habits that have just developed over the course of time. And so, so I think that's just important for like all of us to be thinking about is like, you know, how can I like, implement certain habits in my life that will get get me closer to, to the goals that, you know, I've said. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But one thing can I do, you know, like every day, whether it is just setting a, a reminder, because sometimes I think we have goals, but we literally forget. Right. Right. We just right. don't remember what right. we wrote down. So I think setting those calendar reminders is a way personally that I set myself accountable or setting an alarm or a notification on my phone, like, hey, you got to meditate for five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, just so I don't forget what those things are. But taking those incremental steps, it's easier if it's habit. Right. But until those 21 days or those 30 days happen where it is habit, right. reminding yourself or asking your friends, hey, I said I was going to do that. Can you ask me if I did that? <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Right. Right. The behavior comes first. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so, um, I'm so happy that you brought up calendar because that's like, it's about like accountability, right? Mm -hmm. you got to create a system around you that will allow you to hold yourself accountable. Yeah. The other thing is if calendar don't work for you, uh, just find a partner mm -hmm. or find a friend mm -hmm. that you could do something with so you could both hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a way to keep yourself grounded to your goals. Jasmine, we're getting close to closing this out. We appreciate you've been with us for more. This is the longest. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Yeah, we, not, <laughs> I, I, we have to pay you. We might have to, 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 to have some sort of like uh, a payment plan. Here, right? We ain't got it like that. Um, not, yet. not yet. It's coming. Uh, yeah. right, we, Speak it. Don't, don't say nothing else. Just say it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Power of life and death. In the tongue. tongue. In the tongue. Thank you, thank you for reassuring and, yeah. uh, our confidence that this is going to be successful. Thank Absolutely. Uh, Jasmine, what do you do for fun? Um, just to close this out, like, how do you keep yourself afloat out there? And, and you're doing so many great things, but you know, how do you uh, take care of yourself? Sure. So I love to dance. So I support a black woman owned studio. Mm -hmm. um, they have outdoor dance classes. Mm -hmm. um, usually I'm doing things in the city, whether it be supporting 6A or going on Katika, finding a black business to support. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm hungry for lunch. What black business can I go to? Mm -hmm. Because that may bring me to a different part of town. It may help me see other businesses. So I usually I like to just explore. I've only been in Philly for three years now, so I'm still new to some neighborhoods or some areas um, and new businesses are popping up and all that stuff. So I really like to kind of explore, mm -hmm. build my network. Of course, Instagram is big. You know, I learned about a lot of stuff happening through Instagram. Um, but that's really, I love to just kind of dance and be out and be exploring and seeing what's going on with people. Where, where, where can people find you? On a, you know, what's the best way to reach you? I know you got your website and you got your IG. Like, what, what are the best mediums to find you? On? Yeah, so my website is number one. So my website is jasmineomo.com. Um, and my in Instagram is here, j.sheree. underscore amore. But also professionally, I prefer LinkedIn. Okay. So if you just type my name in LinkedIn or you go to linkedin.com slash in slash Jasmine OMO, you'll be able to find me there. Um, and I like to network and kind of see what people have been doing and how I can be a resource for them okay. as well. But um, I do want to just say I appreciate you all having me here. Thank you okay. so, so, so much. Uh, I've we, we <laughs> to have you. Yeah, this, this, you are the light. This was, the, this was definitely our longest uh, pep soup talk yet. <laughs> Yeah. And we couldn't, we couldn't even, we couldn't stop it because there was so many just right. so, And people are still watching. They're still here, so it's good. And we appreciate you for being with, but for honestly being here with us, because yeah. we know it's Saturdays, and you could use your time to do anything right now, but you decide to be with us. So we are extremely uh, appreciative and grateful for you to be with us and be part of this conversation too because one thing I noticed people were not just following along Jasmine they were also commenting they were asking me questions mm -hmm. so yeah because at the end of the day it's just about us you know we also we welcome welcome your feedback um, mm -hmm. you know want to know what you like about uh, about this show and mm -hmm. other shows we've done um, so shoot us a DM what? you know shoot us an email um, and uh, you know, let us know we want to hear from you that's it, Jasmine. Any last word? No, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I see the handshakes and the people said this was fantastic. Thank you all for tuning in. I do hope I'm also happy to be a resource. So if people have questions about career, ed tech, transitions, like DM me because I, I am happy to be a resource for our community as well. What is your IG handle? Uh, J. Sheree, C H E R I E underscore Amor, A M O U R. But if you follow One Jalof, they have posts with my name on it. So you can just follow me um, through them. Right.
And I love who's uh, Aaliyah. Aaliyah! She, she's, been, she's been here this whole time. So shout out to you, Aaliyah. Yes, and, Aaliyah's uh, my friend. Who else is still on here? Shout out to Tammy. We have <laughs> Seema ben, Young. Seema Young. Shout out to Seema. Seema the God. Um, I don't know how. We have Ben. <laughs> who else is on there? Adam's Girls Joint. I don't know who that is. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, shout out to everyone who was just uh, here with us the whole time. And shout out to those who just wanted to show their face and disappear. <laughs> <laughs> we, we see you, but we appreciate the love. Um, that's it. That's our show. All right. Yes, thank uh, you so uh, much. I appreciate the, the opportunity. Time. All right. Shout out to Jasmine. Shout out to you. And thank you for this food. I'm about to eat, everybody. <laughs>